All right, this is the very first episode of the Trash People podcast coming to you from beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, you? Uh, I am Steve. I am here with uh, Mr. Brett and K Dog. Give him a hi, everybody. K Dog! <laughs> oh, oh. Are we supposed to introduce ourselves? <laughs> All right, so. I'm not introducing myself. <laughs> I get introduced. Oh, oh, okay. But Brett! <laughs> Yes, I'm Brad. Yeah, that's that's me. I'm I'm Brad, not K Dog. That K Dog's sitting next to me. All right, so I am shamelessly ripping off other podcasts that I like to listen to, and I noticed that none of them are from uh, super red states. So I thought this would be a nice little place to foment some revolution and uh, start some shit. Uh, so I personally identify as an anarcho communist, and I needed to bring a little bit of that message out to the world. Uh, when I say anarcho communist, I do not mean capitalism or USSR style communism. Uh, I do not believe in hierarchies of any sort. I believe in completely horizontal structures for government and business and the complete direct democracy of all forms of life. Everywhere you go, everyone gets to vote on what involves them. I don't know if I actually have a real tendency or anything, uh, but I think as an umbrella term, that fits. Uh, uh, Brett over here likes to yell about being a communist a lot. I think he scares a lot of people, especially Probably. especially yeah. given where we're at. That's uh, true. Geographically, I mean, uh, this is the state of Barry Goldwater and SB 1070 after all. Mm-hmm. But there are people in Phoenix. We do ah, exist. Yep. There are. We do exist in this world. Socialism is a very important topic in the state due to our very large native and Hispanic populations. Uh, and there's a lot of horrible shit that happens here. So I'm not going to make this podcast Arizona-specific or anything, but it will be talking about Arizona. There's very important things that need to be spoken about here, so we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of that. Yeah, so Trash People Radio. We are Trash People. That was them trash clapping people. on their legs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do now. Clapping the air. That's my new well, What happened to the woo? Or the, the regular <laughs> clapping? I thought we were clapping. Well, see, for K-Dog, I, I do the bark. And right. then, yeah, for trash people, I feel like I need to have two trash cans that I bang together. Ooh, oh, just yeah, clang, 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 clang. We, clang we can't away. afford trash cans, so we don't have props. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I bought this $30 USB microphone. It's sitting on a, what, $25 poker table? $30. That Carrie card does her table. sewing on. It's a card table, excuse me, not a card poker table. table. But a poker table would be nicer. It would have, like, the slots for drinks and stuff. Yeah, no, this not is, this. This table, it's us. Yeah, we, we don't even get table. felt. A piece of plywood with some sad cushions. I'm really certain this is just extra hard cardboard down here. <laughs> Reliable cardboard. A piece of plywood <laughs> with some cushions. And four legs. All right, so given that we're in Arizona, I thought maybe I would get started on something Arizona. Gay Pride last weekend. A group of protesters showed up at the Pride Parade, and when I first saw the headline, I assumed it was going to be uh, some reactionary bullshit from right-wing type folks. <coughs> Turns out it was uh, a movement for illegal immigrants. They were coming into the Pride Festival and they were protesting all the corporate sponsorship, uh, the police involvement, uh, and basically they were arguing that oh. it needed to be a more inclusive type movement because oh, intersectionality yeah. worked really well for uh, the gay community. Uh, yeah, And it hasn't worked so well for... Non-documented folks. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's been pretty harsh on them. Yeah. That's uh, for sure. And yeah, there was a lot of liberal bullshit going on in the video. Uh, the video I saw on Facebook, uh, they were throwing around racist slurs. They were telling them to go home, which is always coming with like some sort of dog whistly thing. And what? Yeah, oh it always gosh. sounds fucked. Ah. Uh, <sighs> But anyways, it's really disappointing for me to see that coming out of a community that has gained so much from intersectionality. I feel like the civil rights movement basically gave the gay community that opportunity to go ahead. And when they yeah. blow off uh, yeah. undocumented immigrants like that, it's 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 really hurtful. It makes me sad. Um, well, that is a travesty. It is not. It's very unwelcoming. There's no reason for us to not be welcoming to the other people around us. Especially if we ourselves want to be welcomed by other people. Mm-hmm. Well, and a big problem with that is when it comes down to corporate sponsorship and having the police involved. Uh, it makes undocumented people feel uncomfortable. And right. fact is, I've been to Pride a couple times. This is not a dangerous place. No, no there's no need all. for police whatsoever. No. And uh, yeah, it just uh, it seems really 
odd to me. And I see where, I guess, where some people are coming from on the fact with, when it comes to police, I mean, I see why they might be there. Because that is, I mean, we have seen that large events where large groups of people sort of show up. There tends to be certain things, like there could be so-called terrorist attacks, but isn't that sort of the point of the land of the free and the home of the brave? Like, aren't we supposed to be braver than having to lean on a crutch that is... You, you know we're a little bit more cowards than that. We don't... We aren't well, we, we are brave. Take that out of our motto, then. I mean, we're well, not free I mean, either, but well, definitely yeah, that not goes brave. <laughs> yeah, definitely no, not we're, brave. we're brave enough to pay men to protect us. Like, yeah, that's that's the important we part. We pay brave people brave. so we can be Such we can be brave. scary. Exactly, exactly. When in all reality, the two are actually not completely separate. You can be scared and still be brave. Well, and so far. Watching Pride over the year, the only thing I've seen cops do so far is break up a protest of illegal immigrants that wanted to feel included. Right. So, uh, yeah. and I do apologize for using the term illegal immigrants. Uh, it's built into my vocabulary. It's a very common phrase around here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, apologies for that, but I'm probably going to do it again and again and again. Well, Sorry. especially when you're referring to it in this context of that's how... But in our hearts, you know, they're not illegal. In our hearts, everybody's no person yeah, is illegal. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. maybe a few people. Well, but yeah, but those are people. Else. Not nice working people who just want to live. Exactly. Nothing exactly. illegal about them. Oh, darn, they want to work hard. Right? It's something we should put down. How dare not. They? Sorry How if dare my, they? my sarcasm doesn't always come across. It, it's a lot of sarcasm. <laughs> Mucha sarcasm. All right, uh, so I'm sure this is going to be beat to death by the time I actually manage to finish editing this episode because I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Uh, but the Pepsi commercial, guys. Oh my god, that. <laughs> Fucking wow, Pepsi yeah. commercial, dude. All right, so this is one of the saddest looking protests I've ever seen, even on a sound stage. Uh, I think the one sign with words said, join the conversation. Yeah, which you is know, uh, the conversation about addictive sodas. <laughs> <laughs> about diabetes. That's There's what so much sugar in this one. Have you tried it? Oh my god, yes! <laughs> we all know the way to stop police brutality is to give them a Pepsi. Of course. Right? That's what that was implying, right? That the sure cops were, like, all. lining up in front of them? Like, there was going to be some sort of, uh... Well, they're lumping all yeah. protests together, saying that each and every one is just as generic as the next one because they didn't even have to have a sign. That well, I mean, I've been to a few protests. <sighs> Not once did I see a conga line of people dancing. Yeah. Uh, well, the Occupy protests had a little bit of that. But, like, it wasn't down the whole fucking street. Uh, it wasn't, like, flash mob reality TV style? No, no, and uh, I didn't see any Pepsis. No? No Pepsis, and no celebrities in wigs until they suddenly, out of nowhere, decided to... How do you even know if it's a celebrity if they're wearing a wig, though? How do you right? Tell? Well, I'm glad right. the 1% came down and just, you know, saved everybody, you know? Well, of course. We need Thank God for the 1%. They just... Exactly. They just Exactly. That girl who was modeling up there, she just came down. You know, she's, she's got the money. She, she understands. You my know, like favorite, how to stop. My favorite ridiculous part about that commercial was when <laughs> the Jenner girl decides that she's going to go join this protest. So she rips her wig off, right. wipes off her lipstick, and then slams the wig into the hand of her black personal <laughs> assistant. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. And I'm just wondering like, if that lady even knew what was coming for that commercial, because even watching the commercial, she looked a little surprised. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, maybe she's just a really good actress, babe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But, uh, I don't know. The implication of breaking down color barriers and yeah. this one random white girl with a ice-cold Coca-Cola. Pepsi. 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 <laughs> Sorry, it was it was a Coke commercial done very poorly, and oh, they knew them man. poorly in the first well, place. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was the most pandering shit, uh, and it was the bad kind of pandering. But you know what? It did really bring people of all political affiliations together in denouncement of how <laughs> fucking stupid that piece of <laughs> shit commercial was. Everybody can agree. God. It's like they just like lumped all the millennials together and were like, you're all hipsters. Here you go. I mean, I, 
I, I, half of them were dressed up like they were fucking homeless, and I've never seen like, a homeless. The, no, but they were like gap. They were like gap hipsters, like gap hipsters. You know what I'm talking about? That where explains the backflips. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, and the God. white T-shirts that were just a little bit too white. Right, with the it's well, a little yeah. uncomfortable, and the, the little V neck that's like mm. a little wider than you really think it ought to yeah. be. Dips a little bit too far. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. you guys know way too specifics about Gap clothing. <laughs> We're secret connoisseurs. Yes, I, I right. love the Gap. Right. It's where I got my underwear. Your poop underwear? Yeah, my poop underwear. <laughs> It's a good pair of underwear right there. It's a great pair of underwear. I love my poop underwear. Covered in poop. Covered in poop. We're just going to leave that right there. Because my underwear are covered in poop. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, uh, I'll find another topic. I was reading what was ostensibly a satire article by a Lutheran minister. It was titled... Why men and women can never be just friends. Oh, Keep in mind, this is their idea of satire. This man is a satirist. He is making a joke, a light-hearted little ditty here, for all the conservatives to really get their giggles out of. Uh, with lines such as, The average man lives in a competitive friendship market where some forms of friendship appeal to him more than others and therefore get his business. What then is the average man looking for in a friend? By and large, something along... And then it's a list of fucking bullshit. And then it goes, <laughs> Which of these things are you better at giving a man than another man is? The answer is clear. None of them. You are not especially good at liking Karate Ninja 7, Exploding Hands of Fury, or informing the offensive line of the Chicago Bears via your Samsung that they are all false starting idiots. And it's become apparent to me this man has no real life friends. Well, uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> No real life relationships. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems to me that this man has never actually like felt another human being's breath on his body. And it's, <laughs> it's really starting oh, to bug him. I oh, feel like man. deep down inside, he is being crushed by his own depressingness. Even a fist hitting his own face would be the human touch that he wants, oh. that he desires right now. Yeah. 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 Um, wow. And I think he's closer to getting that than he is to getting Lady in the Sack. Kara, you got any input with your vagina over there? Um, I mean, maybe if he would be able to be friends with women, he could actually find one who might be willing to have sex with him. But it sounds to me like he's kind of closed himself off to ever meeting anyone. <laughs> well, and that's funny, because uh, I got another thing here <laughs> written oh. down that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. And uh, it's an article from Jacobin Magazine uh, called Lipstick Fascism. And it was about this Swedish woman, uh, Lana Lochtef, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, because I'm, I'm not a very smart man and I can't speak Swedish. Uh, with headlines such as, Make Patriarchy Great Again, uh, this woman has uh, some pretty, pretty interesting quotes about her. She is against the women's suffrage movement. Not that she doesn't want women to get the vote. Get this. She thinks that it should be one family, one vote, and the man casts it. So the woman still gets <laughs> her say, but she still has to be submissive to the man. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, I don't know what kind of backward-ass shit this is. Why, why are there women out there that actually want to give up the little bit of autonomy that they got? I mean, this is a world where nobody has a lot of autonomy. What's... What, 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 I don't understand. What, 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 why, does, why would she even want that? Like, oh, what... Okay. Giving up some of your own freedom... I honestly have been learning something kind of interesting about people working in the retail business for so long, and that is that there are two types of people. The people who want to make decisions for themselves, and the people who look to others to make decisions for them. So really, everybody is just either a child <laughs> Or an adult capable of deciding what they want for themselves. And but, so those people who typically don't want to decide for themselves tend to submit to somebody else. This seems like a particularly strange thing to try to push on others, this however. Makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you just don't get it at I, all. Yeah, but there's... No. 
Like I understand the whole wanting to be a submissive wife, and that that's that yes. that's some people's thing. They they they, they want too. they want someone else to take care of them. Yes, but right. then go. Uh, this is how society should be as a whole. Seems absolutely ludicrous to me. Did you never at any point enjoy being able to make your own decisions? Has that ever been a thing you were able to do? And that this woman, given her own stances on this, shouldn't be allowed to talk about this. Right. This is yeah. something men should be talking about. And it seems so self-defeating for a woman to come uh -huh. out and say this. Where do you go? Where do you go with that? Yeah. I'd, uh, hmm. That is definitely a difficult one. It is interesting, too, that idea that she almost has a dominance in trying to insist other people follow her. It's a very manly thing to do. To right. tell me what to do. Right, exactly. Huh. Irony! Yeah. <laughs> the greatest example of it. So I know you guys can't tell, but we have been joined by the uh, Fruit Fly Band here. Uh, oh, got, 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 the, got the full fucking course. There are never fruit flies until you want to sit at a table. Well, yeah. I blame cold brew Brett. Ugh. I blame... Oh, and actually, I'm sorry. I, I gave away your secret identity earlier. I called you Kira at the beginning of the last segment. Oh, no. <sighs> Words out, K-Dog. You're actually named Kira. I'm unmasked. <laughs> <laughs> It lasted a whole half episode. A whole half episode. Quarter episode? We don't even know. Yeah, and uh, as a side <laughs> note on that, I was going to use a fake name for this show. My name actually is Steve, believe it or not. With, Steve. But yeah, I was going to be Oscar. Oscar the Grouch, but Facebook wouldn't let me fake that. Because I know oh, I have a Facebook, and Facebook, Facebook would not allow me to be Oscar Grouch. So uh, I got boned on that front. Uh, <sighs> But yeah, I was worried I was going to get fired, and then I realized we're all three pretty not good at talking all that much. So, uh, I figure, you know, like, if, if, no one will ever hear this, and if they do, uh, I'll just delete the first episode. This will almost definitely be the worst one anyways. You think so? so? You think so? Oh, I think this will go down in history. This is, this is it. This is the best. The one. worst radio show no, no, this may be the best radio show. You're all sitting there right now, and you're just like, this is incredible! I can't believe I'm listening to this! Yay! God has shown his grace on us all. Uh, so yeah, if you listen to this episode, you are super lucky. Because I will delete it someday. All right, uh, K Dog is instructing me to pour her a shot because. Huh? Shot, shot. shot. Uh, is that up for me? No, no. Oh. I was explaining size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wanted it smaller. Well, you need to do the grande. You do your Yeah, K Dog is used to me, so she needs Wait, a why small. Why in the world would somebody just like voluntarily say that they're just like. <laughs> You know what? I don't want to vote anymore. All right. If you really have that big of a problem with it and you just decide all of a sudden that you're like, you know what? I really want my daddy or whoever it is. I don't judge. Again, like if you, if it's your thing to be submissive, fan fantastic. Good for you. That's great. Like, but you know what? First off, don't put that on other people. What? Just you do you. Nobody else would, will tell you what to do, but you do you. And you know, if you really want him to like have your vote, then like literally just be like, daddy. Who do you want me to vote for? And if he says vote for this person, vote for that person. There right, you go. And that's Done. your dumb fuck decision. There you go. You get and to every make other it. person who agrees right. with you, Miss, in this country, I can't imagine there are many, but I'm sure there are. I guess good for you because that's your choice, but I may not understand it. But either way, you know what? Do the same thing, but don't try and force that on everybody else who actually wants to have a voice and is not trying to spread their fetish onto the rest of society, okay? Like, there's nothing wrong, again, with that. Love it. Fantastic. Good for you. But still, it's not for everybody. Well said. I just want to say that I have been standing in this line all day. And if this line is any indication of how this company is being run, then we are in big trouble. Thank you. Right. I know. And I just want to say that I believe that there are options out there. A take a number option like they have in a deli. What about line varieties? Like an express line. For quick comments of 10 words or less. So, now on to the matriarchy and feminism. Uh, some hardcore, rad femme, real woman shit going on here. Mm. Uh, Chelsea Clinton has announced she will not be running for president in 2020. She's not the one to do it. Oh, no. We were all hoping so hard. Right? 
I mean, was, thank Christ. Where, where did Clintons get off? <laughs> Just like, be clear. We just we're with absolutely no over. experience and no credibility to her name whatsoever. She's basically worked for her parents' foundation for the last some odd year. I don't follow Chelsea. I only read about people when I want to hate on them. A little Great bit, so. experience. It just seems like the only people who get into the White House these days are people who just happen to have resided in it when they were children. If her moderately qualified mother was beat by the most clown-like person to mm-hmm. ever run for president. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm even putting Vermin Supreme in here. Vermin oh. Supreme, less goofy than Donald Trump. <laughs> um, and I think that her daughter that no one gives a fuck about is going to be... Oh, the, the best part is, on the Twitter where it was announced, or where someone had brought up the story, there were people, I disagree, run Chelsea, run. Uh, and then this guy... I, well, this lady, Kathleen Kane. Why does the media constantly want to encourage dynastic politics? Why do we constantly want to encourage dynastic politics? And it happened on the right as well. Seriously, it happened with Jeb Bush. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the, a lot of people thought he'd make a great president because, you know, the first two Bushes did a real big they were there. job. It's in the yeah, genes. They did the job. They, they were there. <laughs> sort of, I think that's I appropriate. Guess. They were there. <laughs> they existed within that entity. Could you imagine in like fucking sixteen years when a fucking Trump's little Trumplers coming what? on like a... It's just so strange. It's like we... It's Honestly, we treat the presidency a lot like almost celebrities at this point. Almost like yeah. the media. You know, we see somebody in the limelight for so long that all of a sudden just the little Jenners are all of a sudden moving up. And they're now the Kardashians. And, and that's what we're stopping racism and police brutality. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, Wait, was that her? Yes, yes, that was Kendall Jenner, bro. What? Yes. Oh my gosh. It makes it even worse. <laughs> oh, it's I don't know who these wives. I don't like look at pictures of these people. I don't care. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> See, it all comes circle. See, circle. I only yeah. know because of the Reddit headlines. Right. Uh, I get ninety nine percent of my news from Reddit because I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, so all of my news. Yeah, so I, I get my news spoon fed to me by a bunch of people. Uh, who call themselves autistic, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what the weird obsession with being fake autistic is. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. But you see it a lot in the Donald Trump subreddits. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a that thread about... Uh, what was that? That is an interesting question. What is the... Oh, why they want to be called autistic? Yeah. I don't know. And, like, is this, like, a trend that... The internet uh, is Yeah, I think it spawns like, from, like, 4chan type shit. Yeah. Uh, where they called it weaponized autism. They said uh, that Donald what? Trump won the presidency with meme magic because they made enough shit posts and crappy memes that uh, that swayed everyone's opinion to vote for Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton. Interesting. You know, bad, hmm. goat, uh, b- bad jokes about uh, fascist frogs. Um, they think that's what did it. And, uh... It's weird watching their language. Uh, there was a thread on the Donald Trump subreddit. I highly recommend you don't go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was about Joy Villa, the uh, the singer, the lady who wore the uh, Make America Great MAGA dress to uh, one of the music awards. I don't fucking know. It doesn't matter. It I, really I, doesn't I matter. I don't know. But anyway, she got popular, obviously, with the, uh, the, the trumpeter crowd. And she was going to do uh, an AMA and ask me anything on Reddit, on the, the Donald Trump subreddit. Oh, goodness. They pulled her last moment, day of. Yeah. And they made a post about it. The, <laughs> okay, so this opens up so amazingly. The billionaire Donald Trump sacrificed his own personal wealth and admiration as a star in order to run for president of the United States, spreading red pills of truths that politicians were afraid to admit. In the course of a few months, he went from a beloved icon a hero to, uh, to a hero to many and a demon to some. He didn't have to do this. He could have lived the rest of his life in paradise. That's a quote from the person who posted this. And uh, at the time where I highlighted this page yesterday, or the day before... It was at over 5,000 upvotes. People wow. really eat this shit up. Um, yeah. This is a subreddit where they call him the God Emperor. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, wow. Uh, <laughs> these people have become such like an inside-outside joke that you can tell what the fuck they're doing here. This is, this is, uh, this is hero worship. This is, this is a cult of personality. This is fucking weird. Yeah. Uh, and what blows me away is how when you watch their language, they literally speak in memes. Uh... When they say he's red-pilling 
everyone. They're talking about the fucking Matrix movie with the red pill, the blue pill, and you take the red pill. So, yeah, and it was something that got invented or started being hijacked by the uh, pickup artist movement. Uh, yes. Uh, where they realized that once they got red pilled, and all they had to do was be a fucking asshole to women, they could finally get some pussy. Uh, which I don't think works. I mean, it may work on some weird occasions. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean. I mean, they, 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 they say, like, shit's majorly woke. Uh, <laughs> woke? Oh, woke. Woke F. Ass fuck. Woke F. Oh, woke F. Yeah. Yeah, uh, woke they, they, they call themselves. Woke <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they call Alrighty. themselves centipedes, uh, which mm, that turns me. It doesn't on. seem like that positive of a thing to call yourself, but then again, they do adorn themselves with fascist frogs. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, also, this is one of the most heavily moderated subreddits I've ever seen, where they would delete any dissenting opinion. And uh, one of the are men- we surprised about that? <sighs> Doesn't that just sound right? <laughs> and what one of the people here uh, who's mad that the AMA got canceled goes, <laughs> one, let her talk. We don't silence. I've been banned from three different accounts on this this forum. They they, they definitely <laughs> silence. Uh, <laughs> and they, two, we have to be careful. This could pen- potentially ruin this person's life. They think they're going to ruin her life by exposing the fact that she's not particularly pro-Trump. Um or she wasn't. She had some pro Bernie Sanders tweets prior to the election. There's an interview with her where she says that she was in Europe at the time, and so she was just getting the European version of events. And when she came back, she really is a Trump supporter, which I kind of buy. I mean, yeah, if you're stupid, that that's yeah. um, if a you're thing. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next post down is she's a Scientologist. They use everything to their advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell if these people oh. know they're being hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, entertainment's entertainment, right? <laughs> I, I just really don't fucking know. And there's like pages of this shit. This shit goes for a long, well, long while. Uh, people are all does. up in arms about this. Um, wow. Yeah. So. Uh, On the cult of personality front, also, uh, it is now, and this is a headline, it's now illegal in Russia to share an image of Putin as a gay clown. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good. There was a specific law passed for this. I was so sick of that image. Sounds like something (laughs) Trump would do. (laughs) Right. Especially after that whole Snoop Dogg thing. So they added this to a list of uh, items that constitute... Free speech. That they added this to a list of things that constitute extremism. Item 4071. A picture of a Putin-like person with eyes and lips made up. That part is in quotation marks. Captioned with an implicit anti-gay slur implying, quote, the supposed non-standard sexual orientation of the president of the Russian Federation. And uh, the Moscow Times thinks it probably looks like this. (laughs) (laughs) So this is a specific image that's banned, right? Not like all... Versions of it. Uh, yeah, the best that, image I've that seen one week. I feel like that image, image should be everywhere. It should actually. I, I thoughtly enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty Ooh, good. so beautiful. Right, and the, the the article goes on to show more and more of this. Uh, but this is. Washington. I have to say, I think that might be the best picture Putin has ever taken. Yeah. Um, but that is the Washington Post, which, as we all know, has been on a super anti-Trump thing um, and super anti-Russia. Yes. Uh, yes. Which is bizarre in the uh, the way that I've seen Republicans handle this whole thing. <clears throat> I let my phone die at work today. It's the first time it's ever happened, and I didn't have a charger for it. So I had to drive home with the radio. Uh, the radio stations that I do like or thought I did like, I haven't listened to the radio in about two years, uh, all suck. They're horrible. So I just kept going until I found something that didn't make me angry. And then I landed on something that <laughs> really didn't make me angry. Oh, God, it was the worst. I stopped on uh, Republican Talk Radio. KTAR, shout out. Uh, uh? Give me money, please. Uh, <laughs> anyways, KTAR's <laughs> the fucking worst. Uh, yeah. This whole thing starts with this guy who sounds like a southern Alex Jones. Uh, I don't know where the fuck they got a guy with a southern drawl in Phoenix. Uh <laughs> Been here a long time. I've been here about 13 years. I have yet to meet someone with a southern drawl yeah, in Phoenix, Arizona. 
Um, so this whole thing was pretty weird to me, watching, hearing this guy rant about how uh, it's actually the Obama people that staged a false flag chemical weapons attack in uh, Syria. He believes it was the U.S. government, but no one attached to Trump. Right, of course. And not. this is a weird take on it, because almost all conspiracy theories about the government doing bad shit up till this point have all been focused around like the president and his cabinet. Right. And, and now that they have their guy, they have their god emperor, and they are the centipedes at his feet. Uh, <laughs> now the former president is launching chemical weapons attacks right. in Syria. Oh, yeah. Because it um, couldn't be the current one at all, ever. No. I, well, and uh, it's just... I feel like they're giving way too much credit to Obama right now. Like, <laughs> while he's overseas, supposedly writing a book, he secretly infiltrated the White House and is still control. Like, do we really want to think that about he our president? He's really the head of the CIA now. And uh, he's on their yeah. CIA aircraft oh. carrier where they launch these chemical weapons attacks Goodness. on civilians in uh, Idlib, Syria. Because, uh, you know, he's that big. he is that big of a dick, actually. Well, yeah. Yeah, Obama did it. No. Oh, no, definitely. <laughs> Obama's sitting there going, like, oh, uh, man, you had to do it that early in presidency? <laughs> I didn't right. know I could do it, like, three months in. Yeah, he, guys. He had to wait, like, four years. Did he even wait four years? I don't know. Like, 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 the timeline of the Obama presidency was such a fucking clusterfuck because he came yes, in on a fucking white horse and everyone got so fucking weird about him. Oh, savior. Yeah, hey, I'll admit, I got wrapped up in it. I saw it. I, I'm willing to admit when I was wrong. The only reason I didn't was because I was still young enough and living with my grandmother that I had to constantly listen to, oh, let's see your hopey changey stuff. <laughs> 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 so, I mean. Little did you know your hardcore Christian grandmother was right about something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it happens every once in a just while. Just one thing. Now, broken <laughs> clocks, man. Broken clocks. It's happened about it. Everybody's always been. They've, They've all never had a good right. president. America hasn't had a good president. I don't think any country's ever had a really great president. I would agree with. That. Of course, now we're going to get a lot of. I mean, there have been great presidents. Nelson Mandela. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like Nelson. I love his, the fact that his name was also Nelson. Like you know, that's just a great name right there. It's Nelson is a. Pre that's also the name of my left testicle. Oh my gosh. It is. That's excellent. It's from when I got testicular torsion and a lefty swell up to about the size of my <sighs> fist. And uh, I showed it to one of my friends, and he goes, it's shaped like Africa. And therefore Nelson. he said, we name it Nelson. So my left nut is named after the political revolutionary Nelson Mandela. I'm pretty sure we're banned in, in all of I mean, Africa it's gone now. Especially, like, South Africa just does not listen to us anymore. Well, One episode in, they're already, like, banning us. Well, it's that's okay. why we're going to delete it. Oh, yes, yeah, okay. right, we're going to delete this. Gonna uh, it's all right, South Africa, I lost the ball. It's gone. I have a, a rubber nudicle. Uh, like you put in a dog after you neuter, spay, neuter. Neuter. Spay or neuter. It's about gender, not... Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't put... You don't put fake oh, nuts right. on I guess you don't put <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess you could. You could. That'd be really weird. You could. Just to, like, fuck with everybody no, who's, like, walking to. by trying to figure out the gender of the dog. And no penis, big old balls. Yeah, put a blue collar on him. Her put body, her on. choice. Oh, what's his name? It's a girl. <laughs> oh, no, excuse me. His body, his choice. Shit. <laughs> hey, we don't judge. That would be doggy PC here. Oh, yeah. Doggy Absolutely. PC. Coffee. That's my dog's name, Coffee. That's that's who you heard guy. just clacking around. Yeah, he, you'll hear his dog. nails because I need to cut them. Clickety but, clackety. Yeah. Her body, her choice, Brett. If exactly. She, wants her nails, she can have her name. You can be whoever you feel you are, yeah, Coffee. Coffee believes in we, Jesus. We believe in you. <laughs> coffee his name does is Joseph Jesus. because Joseph. He's the one Christian in the house. That's his name, Coffee. We call him Coffee. He could be Josephine. You could be Josephine. We're gonna Ooh. cut this part. Out. Josephine. Don't you put on that red dress? Can we pause so I can pee? No, go just go pee. Me and Barrel keep talking. I'll cut it. I mean, I'm almost. Well, once gonna, you get back, let me know, cause then I'm gonna go pee. <laughs> All right. What are we gonna talk about? I don't know. What we're gonna talk about. We can talk about this fucking fly. Are we gonna do a um, a moment where you're like, uh, you're gonna be like John Oliver, and you'd be like, and now this, and I just like walk in and be like. And now, Brett rants about three-legged chairs. <laughs> yeah, so Brett has this thing about three-legged chairs. Uh, I three really all things. I really need He's to talk about it. I really need to talk about this. You don't have to be that so, close, man. The like, spectrometer is going off the charts here. Oh, this, but this is like You're super You're the loudest important. one in this bunch, easily. 
I, yeah, probably. That's why I moved it away from you and closed oh, That's probably here. a good call. Yeah. They did that to me back in high school when I was yeah. in theater. They, they were like, there's 50 people Anyways, singing. Brett, I don't know if you noticed, but a tripod. Oh, see, and that's exactly it. They, I never understand. I, I just, uh Yeah, no, we understand it with camera don't and audio equipment. Threes are better. I'm sitting right now on a on a stool with four legs, and it's wiggling back and forth, back and forth. And I just, I honestly, I don't understand why any type of chair, especially a chair, would be designed with anything other than three legs. You got one in the front, two in the back, and that way, you never wiggle back and forth. And on a table, it would be even better. It'd be even e even easier. And if people, I hear, I hear you. A lot of people complain, well, okay, well, if you're going to be doing that, then all of a sudden people's legs won't be in the right spot. Okay, well, here is what you do. You design a table with one pole going down onto a flat bottom with three-piece legs on that. All of a sudden, people put their feet on top. I'm just saying, to all of you designers out there, to all of you builders, excellent people out there, um, just, um, just start using three legs. Use three legs, because it just, all the time, I'm constantly putting paper or something under the fourth leg, and it makes no sense. We, we could just make everybody's life a little bit easier if everything just has three legs. Brett, I think it's a, uh, it's an incentive for the, uh, the matchbook industry. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think, yes. I think big matchbook is, uh, really keeping the whole four-legged chairs and tables <sighs> things around. We would just also kill fewer big trees for more chairs. That's a whole big leg matchbook. of a tree that you didn't kill. Boom! Saving trees. Environmentally conscious. Boom. Three legs. Automatically gets a seal of environmentally conscious. Right, right. But uh, there's no tree lobby. No pro-tree lobby. Uh, <sighs> but most lobbies are anti-tree. Um, so in fact, even I am sitting here with a notebook in my lap. I hate trees, too. Well, no, no, we're no, just no, trying no. to cut down the use Anti-tree. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, that tree. Fuck that tree. Fuck oh, that tree. So sad. I love trees. Uh, well, trees are great. Trees are the best. Our tree died. I know. They took our tree, everyone. We're, we live in a rental away. property, and they take care of the yard. And uh, this weekend... <laughs> <laughs> they took the tree! They took it away! They took my tree! It was like completely dead and growing another tree out of the center of it. I didn't even know we had a tree in the backyard. <laughs> These two came to me the other day like, Steve, can you believe they took the tree? And I was like, which fucking tree? <laughs> what? There's a tree? <laughs> tree? Apparently it's next to where we hang our hammock. I have never seen it before. Um. You make us sound like we live like in a magical place. It's the desert. We live in the desert. That's why, we hang our That's why the tree was dead. And the hammock was twelve dollars off Amazon, and uh, it gets sunburned. So, hey, wasn't that cheap? <laughs> Don't make Brett think his birthday present was that cheap. Hey, he got he got Fra he got Frankie THC. Frankie oh my THC. gosh, Frankie! That's he made up for it. Amazing. That's true too. We did. We definitely did. So how'd that go, guys? Your individual peas. Um, I mean, it's great having an empty bladder, like. Ooh, yeah. That's comfortable. Yeah. I told you this morning about my gigantic pee. Like, yes. I feel all my organ shifting. Yes. Like, I was on a roller coaster that. as my bladder. Because this was, like, a minute and a half long. This is, like, some Guinness world record shit. Like that shit pee from... He, he takes those pees, like, every day, too. Yeah. Because I, I, I always go to their bed. Own. I always fall asleep, like, not off on the couch. And then I go lay down in the bed after Kira wakes me up. K-Dog here. And, uh, okay, Doc. Uh, yeah, I always fall asleep needing to pee and just refusing to pee. One day my prostate's going to start acting up and I'm going to have to change my ways on that. Uh, hopefully I'll be dead by then. Hopefully. Hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll piss in my casket and that'll be the extent of that. Uh, Maybe you'll but just yeah, as I emptied goodness. out this massive, massive piss, uh, <laughs> it was like I was going on like over a big like you go when you hit a, a hill really fast in your car and the suspension stretches out and then it slams <laughs> back down and you get that little woo feeling like you were on the world's shittiest roller coaster. Straight into a roller coaster. <laughs> that's that's what that pee was like this morning. It was very good and I was very proud of myself and it made me very happy. Such pee. Indeed, such pee. Indeed. So, so guys, any topics you wanted to touch on? Anything uh, tickle your fancy or uh, 
make you angry in the last few days? What well, we got going? I mean, you didn't tell us not to look up topics, so I specifically didn't look up topics. Doesn't have to be on point. But we can talk about that article about fucking free speech fuck bus. Oh. Oh. That. That. Uh, so the transphobe bus, the free speech bus, uh, that was rolling around the Northeast t- yes. uh, this last few days, I think the last week or so. Super successfully. They didn't too. get to make any of their stops. <laughs> like They were harassed everywhere they went. Last time this bus went out, someone burned it down. So... <laughs> I did not realize that. Yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm not... In, this is the, the shit. They try to use liberal terminology yes. to make liberals accept them. Yes. The whole, oh, this is just... Free speech. Why would you fight free speech, huh? Yeah, I mean, Mein Kampf was just free speech, yeah. so we, we let that shit go. Uh, yeah, just let it slide by, you know, totally cool. It yeah. drives by and you just wave it on. Yeah, no, this was the uh, Richard Spencer of buses, and no one punched it, so yes. you guys don't have to be all that worried about it, you fucking liberal cry turds out there. Uh, and yeah, uh, they didn't get to make any of their stops, they got harassed every single second along the way. Uh, one guy rented a U-Haul truck and hung a bunch of pro-trans propaganda yes, on the side of it and followed them so around. Good. Uh, yeah, so I was a. Uh, I love that. No, I, I particularly enjoyed the picture of the um, <laughs> of the woman standing in front of the bus with both of her middle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> up. <laughs> she was gorgeous, and she was just. Very angry at just this bus. It was beautiful. It's it's a pretty insightful bus. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's frustrating because that garners sympathy from certain sections of the population. Well, of course. People that are not necessarily anti-trans but are pro-free speech. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if someone was rolling around and throw the kikes in the camps bus, uh, yeah. that would get treated much differently than this. Definitely. Uh, but because... The trans issue is new to the human experience. We pretend like it's not an important topic, and it's a very important topic. It is. Um, yeah. It definitely is. Yeah, these are not kids out there doing this for attention. These are people who feel very uncomfortable in their own skin, and it's acceptable for a certain par- portion of the population to treat them like absolute dog shit. Yeah. No, oh, it's it's sad. It, it definitely is very sad. I actually had at a customized store the other day who... I could only assume that she was portraying herself as a she, but she had a very masculine face, but long hair that looked to be her natural hair, and she was dressed in female clothing and had heels on. So I, of course, assumed that she wanted to be called she, and my coworker called her he, and only called her he. And I said, yeah, I think that she wants to be portrayed, like, seen as a woman. I think that's the attempt there. Like, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> like, if yeah. you're completely a woman, aside from slightly more masculine features on your face, you're still a woman. Yeah. And it, it made me kind of sad because my coworker was very short and judgmental and not open to the idea that this woman clearly was... A woman. Well, you know the circle she rolls around in. Like, she should be accepting to this. She should be... F-dog. <laughs> F-dog. <laughs> gotcha. I like I like our code words now. Right? She, she, she works at the dog shop. That's why everyone gets the... Woof, woof. It's like a Build-A-Bear <laughs> workshop, but for dogs. It makes a lot of sense, actually. It, yep. makes, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I mean... Either way, either way, it's it's very sad and disheartening to see first-hand proof of people not being accepting of the fact that, like, there are people out there that have a different agenda than your opinion. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And they totally should be granted, like, the right to be identified as what they want to be identified as, whether My whole big you argument. have an opinion about it or not. My whole big argument against this when people get all up in arms about it is like, why do you give a fuck? Right. Right. Why the fuck do you give a fuck? Exactly. It you know, matter. I don't like football either. And when you talk about fucking football, right. I don't fucking care. Yeah. That's your thing. Enjoy yourself. Exactly. Well, why? Why why we got to go any further on this? People are going to be like, those two things aren't the same. <laughs> Right. And, and we're just going to sit here and stare at them. <laughs> and we're just going to be like, I, I don't know how to help you, dude. You're right. You're either going to accept people. For, you're either going to let people be who they are mm. or you're not. Yeah. And if you want to live in denial, because the majority of the people out there who are making these restrictions 
they're putting them on themselves for more than likely a reason. I mean, we are here in Arizona, and I, I think we all remember a certain sheriff, I think it was, that was completely against homosexuals and Mexicans. I think right. that was what he said. What was his name again? Uh, I, fucking, uh, yeah, and um, it, it ended Shmo up, came out. Shmoe Harmayo? Um, Shmoe Harmayo, I think was Yeah, something like that, that he was having an affair with a uh, male Mexican man. Is that true? I've never. Yeah, heard I don't know if it was Arpaio. I know that it was a sheriff here a few years ago. I might have been. He's over been the here. sheriff for like thirty fucking years. <coughs> well, I know it was. Maybe it was like a deputy sheriff. Or Maybe something. it was a deputy sheriff. I don't think oh, Arpaio's ever had anything that bad. No, it's him. yeah. I remember. He, I, I will have to look into that. We'll do that next episode. I'll make a note. Will, I'll make a note. Yes. Yes, we need to, um, we need to dig yeah, the dirt. Yeah, it ended up blowing oh, up in his over. face. And <laughs> I don't know if it was our pile, although, like, let's be honest here. Can we all say um, Tent City? Tent City's oh, coming yeah. down. Yeah. Coming down, Fuck guys. Me. Finally. Thank God. Oh, my God. And I was reading, the, uh, I was reading some <sighs> comments on a news article about that, and people were uh, saying that they had been to Tent City, and they strongly preferred it to not Tent City. Because you got more free time, and you had to walk around outside all day. And I know for a fact these people are fucking lying, because oh, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to Arizona, listener, but uh, it gets to be about 115 fucking degrees here in the summertime. Mm -hmm. uh, 120 that, if you're lucky. Yeah, that's kind of an average middle of the summer day. <laughs> and so for anyone to say that it's preferable to live in a tent outside with no cooling, uh, and if you don't know what Tent City is, that's what it is. It's a jail mm -hmm. um, outside. Surrounded by a fence, and it has to be manned 24 hours a day because it's just a fucking fence. People can get out, no goddamn problem. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not an effective jail system in any way. It's strictly a punishment. Oh, but uh, it's okay because they're humane, and they actually they chose a very fashionable color for the garments oh, that all right, of the prisoners right, right, get to right, wear. Right. A nice, a nice pink, nice bright pink, a nice bright pink. Yes, yes. So. In an effort to. Uh, Attack, make them their... feel fashionable. I think that keeps them cool and comfortable. I'm ha! Sure. The whole thing was a fucking ruse to try to. It was Joe Arpaio being tough on yes. crime and being a fucking total cockbag about it. Uh, well, you know what gets criminals to stop being criminals? It's making them more pink. Yeah, I hate exactly. that. Yeah, <laughs> I bet they won't have any problems with the judicial system after that. They'll be no, they'll I'll... be happy as clams. Yeah, they're gonna go back to regular society, totally normal get a job, not at all be shunned for the punishment that they may or may not have ever even <laughs> really <laughs> deserved to begin with. Right. Rehabilitation. This is in a state where uh, you serve no jail time for getting a DUI, but you can spend two years in prison for being caught with a little bit of weed on you. So. Mm, devil's lettuce. Devil's lettuce. The, uh, the gateway to everything bad. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, Brett walked away so we could take a rip off. <laughs> well, I figured it was appropriate. I mean, we don't do that. <clears throat> yeah, you, you, you could smoke <laughs> on Mike, Brett. I'm not. Yeah, you've been doing it already. Problem. I'm trying to keep it quiet. The right. next time I prefer you roll up a jazz cigarette just because I want to call. It if a jazz anybody cigarette. asks, we have one of those keyboards where you press the button and it plays the recorded song because we think it's like cool to have it. In the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all on my soundboard. <laughs> this is being cool. Soundboard. Wicka, wicka. <laughs> <laughs> like it's dead silent for you and me, Steve. Like like the entire time. We'll just be sitting here. But every time Kira comes in, it's like, wicka, wicka, wicka. Hey, dog in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oh, dorks. we got it down. Yeah, no, we uh, <clears throat> nailed down radio personalities. Uh, Episode one, done. <laughs> <laughs> Already got them. So, uh, yeah, that will actually... Uh, so, unless we got anything else to go on, I guess that that's about it. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, boys and girls. It was a, a pleasure recording this. Uh, if you hear it, I hope you don't hate it. You might. I don't care if you do either. Uh, that's okay, too. But please... Keep listening. Uh, we'll get better. We'll get funnier. Uh, Brett will smoke more weed. Yeah, uh, I needed to do more of that. Oh, shit. I poured myself a shot and I forgot to slam it. Oh, oh, I need to... Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> I think I still haven't hit my own. Oh. All right, so... Uh, I'll probably Cheers. that part out since that was weird silence for the most part. Uh, yeah, it really was. We're awkward. But yeah, it was uh, <laughs> a fucking pleasure recording for you here today. 
Um, I'm going to try to do this weekly. I may do some middle-of-the-week shows as well, uh, where Brett and I just yell at each other because we do that a lot. Uh, and yeah, this was Trash People. You. This was Trash People. Bye! Bye. Bye-bye. Alright, so uh, just wanted to give a couple shout-outs here at the end. Uh, thank you to Kira and Brett for dealing with me and uh, indulging me in my stupid podcast experience. And thank you to Denise at Pistola Records for letting me have uh, the use of for uh, Eric Peterson's song, 10,000 Fleas, uh, featuring Leftover Crack for the intro. Um, Thank you to Chapo Trap House for getting me interested in this sort of thing. And thank you to Street Fight Radio for being the ones that I actually uh, take a lot of inspiration from. Uh, I'm sure I'm not as good as any of you guys, but uh, I'll, I'll get there at some point. And uh, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you come back.